So, you think you've had a Kundalini awakening, not to be confused with a spiritual awakening. You start feeling tingling and energy in your hands, which you've never felt before, which is very exciting. Um, you're not quite sure why you've had a Kundalini awakening. Perhaps you were around someone and they injected Kundalini energy into you, uh, whether you knew it or not. Or you were doing Kundalini exercises on YouTube or watching Kundalini videos. Either way, you think you've had a Kundalini awakening. Next, you start getting hissing in your ears. And particularly when you're going to sleep, it gets louder. They, you are very curious what that is. So you look it up and you find out that is your pineal gland activating, which is a sign of your overall energy increasing. Um, you get very excited. You're not quite sure what it means to have your pineal gland activate and what your energetic strength increasing does, but that's got to be a good thing. Um, Next, you start feeling pulses and random energy in your body. You feel energy slithering around. You're not sure why, but your pineal gland is activating. You're feeling tingling, and if you focus on it, you can increase the intensity so much that it comes up to the top of your arms. You're very excited, and then one day you're out, um, and your third eye just opens, and you suddenly start seeing snakes and demons and th things that I can see with remote viewing, things that anyone who's energetically trained can see. The problem is you have not energetically trained. You have simply had the snakes blow you wide open and you can't turn it off. So you have to go home and you look up, how do I close my third eye? How do I stop seeing demons everywhere? This was really cool. It was like a drug trip for 20 minutes. And now it's terrifying and you can't exactly function in reality. You can see these demons and they look right back at you and it's very apparent that they can see you as well. Your third eye has been opened by Kundalini entities, and it's stuck. Um, then you get angry. You start saying, all right, snakes, it's, you open this, close it. I can't live my life with my third eye stuck open. This is terrible. Um, the snakes, in response to this, they start getting angry. And you start getting pains all over your body. It's nerve pain, muscle aches. You feel fatigued when you haven't done anything. You get brain fog, massive mental and physical fatigue. So you look this up and you find out, oh, of course, it's just ascension symptoms. Because your body is full of snakes, they're rising, they're raising your energetic vibrations. Thus, you are becoming energetically stronger. And for your physical body to adapt to that, there will be an absurd amount of pain and fatigue from ascension symptoms. Um, you go, all right, well, how long does this last? And they say, well, forever. It will last until we all ascend which was supposed to be in 2012 and then 2013 and then 2014. And here we are in 2022 and they'll probably still tell you that it's right, it's right around the corner, right? Mid 2023. You'll still be here 2028, 2029. There, there is no ascension. Ascension symptoms are a really good way to explain away a whole lot of pain. Um, so you say, okay, well, this, this is terrible. How do, how do I cure this? And they go, cure it. Right, my darling, you've had a Kundalini awakening. You can't cure it. Why would you want to cure it? You are a chosen one. You have been chosen by the omnipotent, um, you know, I I absolutely incredible snakes. They've chosen you. You're a chosen one, all right? Yes, you may suffer for two years until we all ascend, but then you will ascend with us. You will become a god among men. You will be chosen by the snakes. Now, you may turn into a snake upon ascension, and you may have a lot more snake, mas snake mannerisms, but it will all be worth it for the energetic power you'll obtain. So you go, well, shit, can I opt out of it whatsoever? And they said, no, of, of course you can't. Now, fortunately, you can opt out of it. Um, and that is just a main way that they will tell you about Kundalini um, in order to get you to not try and clear yourself of it. It's just one of the tactics they use. So this clearing video will clear you from negative kundalini energy it will clear you from negative snake entities uh i'll talk about this more later on but essentially you just picture a neon green energy that's what kundalini energy tends to look like for the most part and green snakes if you have a lot of kundalini energy you may feel fear while this video is playing that is not your fear you have no reason to be scared of having snakes erased from your energy body that is the snakes going oh no this is this is bad and they are projecting fear onto you. You may have even felt fear a few minutes before the video showed up. I will talk more about what really a Kundalini awakening is 
awakening is later on. But first, I'll talk about what Kundalini is. So in this matrix, in this world we are in, there are various dimensions, an awful lot. But in the seventh dimension, there are mainly Kundalini and snake entities. They have dominion mostly over that dimension. That's where you'll mainly find them. They are usually from the fifth to ninth dimension, but the seventh dimension is where they usually are. In the seventh dimension, just how on earth, if you're in the beach and you feel calm or happy, depending on how energy sensitive you are, there will be a natural energy grid going through the beach. That's nature's energy connecting up to there. In the seventh dimension, there is a neon green, for the most part, energy grid, which is Kundalini energy. And these Kundalini entities you have inside of you are hooking you up to the Kundalini energy grid, and it's coming inside of you. Now, energy grids are native to most matrices. This energy grid would have been created by someone who was very clever and very creative, and the negative entities would have seen exactly what he did and then copied it and changed it into a negative energy grid for Kundalini. They have come into this matrix that we're in, fed off people's energy, and established the Kundalini energy grid. That is what Kundalini is. Kundalini energy is not native to this matrix. It is an invading force. So, common symptoms that people who are full of Kundalini get, you will often get a feeling of sharp pain throughout your body, you could say this is nerve pain, but what it really is is it's snakes in your energy body biting you there, which is then being transferred to your physical body and causing pain. Um, a lot of hissing in the ears is the pineal gland being activated. They are doing that. The problem is they are activating it with Kundalini energy. And Kundalini energy it's not going to increase your own personal energy. It's not going to increase your soul energy. It is going to increase the amount of kundalini energy flowing through your body. They are working on strengthening your pineal gland for you, but for their own agendas. And if you then go to use your pineal gland while it's full of kundalini energy, you will find it very, very difficult because it's already full and it's already being over, uh, overloaded. Um, other symptoms people get... And Kundalini entities, if you are on the right page, as at least they think you're on the right page, and you're, you've got a good mindset towards them, things may just show up around. They, they may do positive things for you. Uh, you may get a feeling of warning. But for the most part, even if you are fully on their page, they will eventually go, yeah, th this is fine, but we can get way more energy out of you if we just torture you. So it's usually just a matter of time until they will, unless you fully devote yourself to them and really hand over most aspects of yourself. Um, and then they won't torture you because they'll view that your body as their body and they won't want to harm their body, which brings me to Kundalini possession. So if you are either completely overwhelmed by Kundalini energy, particularly if you don't fight against it, or you willingly go, all right, snakes, you can have it, fine, just stop torturing me. You will then have an artificial soul caused by Kundalini often put in your soul area and you will then be possessed or, or we'll talk in third person so someone else will be possessed they will have a kundalini artificial soul and now yeah their soul energy there's a bit back in there somewhere they're somewhere in there but for the most part there is now a snake controlling them now this snake just how with demonic possession it won't just suddenly they won't start slithering around on the floor and acting like a snake they will go oh yes i am this person and i will pretend to be them but if there's any minor inconvenience, they'll have massive anger issues. If there are, if anyone says anything bad about snakes or kundalini, they will freak out because they're really programmed to. Um, you may see yellow spotters begin to show up in their eyes. The irises may change color. If it's extreme, their eyes may shift into snake eyes for about two seconds and then shift back. That is a physical manifestation of what's going on in their energy body. Their energy body has essentially been targeted by Kundalini entities and they have hybridized it from being human into being a snake because it's more hospitable for them. And it's say, why? What, what do they gain from possessing someone? Your soul energy produces a large amount of energy. And if they can possess your entire body, they can have 
the remnants of your soul energy for themselves to power them. And they can also use your physical body to spread the word of Kundalini. They can go around and infect other people with Kundalini, leading to more people being possessed. And overall, they can just use you as a vessel so they can continue their world conquest. That is the main agenda of Kundalini entities. Uh, Kundalini possession, it's happened quite a lot throughout history. The Aztecs would be the biggest example of it. They, I'm not sure how they became completely possessed by Kundalini entities. Um, most likely they were doing a whole lot of drugs connecting with them and they said to the snake, what are you? And the snake said, I am God. So they went, oh, all right, well, I'll, yeah, sure, God, you can come in my body and you can run things. Um, usually what happens <laughs> with these old societies, they get tricked by snakes and then they do a bunch of rituals, they spread the Kundalini energy around, and before you know it, all these people are Kundalini possessed, and they think, you know, it would be a great idea if we just sacrificed millions of people and just gave all their energy to a, this Kundalini snake god. Um, that is what happens when a large amount of a community is possessed by Kundalini snake entities. You get a whole lot of human sacrifices. So next, I'll talk about what a um, Kundalini awakening is. A, and it's it's very important to know that most people who think they've had a Kundalini awakening, because I was uh, when I had a spiritual awakening, I'm like, is this a Kundalini awakening? No, a Kundalini awakening. There's only really two ways for it to occur. Number one, you are watching Kundalini videos on YouTube. You're doing some Kundalini exercises, and you're intentionally bringing Kundalini energy. Or number two, you're around someone who's possessed by kundalini or at least has a lot of it and whether they do it consciously or not kundalini energy comes off them into you and you've just been jump started by kundalini energy their snakes are now going to reside and live inside of your body um those are the main ways a kundalini awakening occurs now you won't normally have it immediately start up what they will do is once kundalini energy is inside of you they will build this essentially wooden pole over your spine to the back of your neck down to the base of your tailbone no um jeff those two gods are not snake gods i don't know the name of the snake gods i don't talk i don't bother talking to what it is but no those are more so demonic um gods what's my train of thought Oh, that's it. I'm talking about what Kundalini awakenings. Yes. So they will build a wooden pillar up from the top of your spine down, uh, yeah, top, top of your spine down to your tailbone. And then from there, they will make what's called an entity cluster. Now, hundreds upon thousands of entities that are tiny will all come together and create a large entity. And this large entity will wrap itself around the Kundalini implant along your spine. And as it progresses, there are stages of the Kundalini implant. The stronger it gets, the stronger the Kundalini in it gets, the stronger your Kundalini symptoms will get, and the longer it will take to clear. In my experience, you, when clearing it, it tends to... So even if I were to use my intention to just erase the top and go down, it's built itself that it will gradually weaken rather than just being erased from, say, stage eight, down or through stage eight, we've got stage eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then you can erase the Kundalini implant. Um, all Kundalini energy can be erased. A main reason why they it's gotten dark, by the way, it was bright like 20 minutes ago. Um, but yes, all Kundalini energy can be erased. They tell you it can't be erased because people will channel entities. They'll channel, and they may channel something completely unrelated to Kundalini um, energy. It may be Egyptian gods, it may be angels, whatever they're channeling, they'll say, can I clear Kundalini? And they'll say no. And so they'll ask again, can I clear Kundalini? And the angel will say no. And then they'll ask a third time, and in the book of channeling, from what I've heard, it says, if you ask an, an entity a question three times, just like in Austin Powers, they have to tell you the truth. Now, if you ask it a fourth time, they may lie again. But the third time, it will always be the truth. So when they say no, you go, oh, okay. Well, Kundalini energy can't be cleared. 
because I've asked my angels and they told me on the third go round that Kundalini energy can't be cleared. And thus, it cannot be cleared. Now, these angels are lying to you because while angels would much rather have possession over your body than the Kundalini snakes, they would rather you have problems with Kundalini than that you didn't. They, while these legions, they're not in all legions with each other, they will lie to support each other. It's how they're programmed. Because if they were to tell the truth about Kundalini, and then you ask Kundalini and they told the truth about angels, you would end up with the truth. So they all lie and say the same thing. Um, a way to gradually clear yourself of Kundalini in general, our energy body is just layers and layers and layers. It's very tedious to clear. But as this goes through, it will clear through. And your symptoms, especially when you first play, if you've got a lot of Kundalini energy, what I'm saying right now, you will not retain most of the information. Um, you, you may just feel very tired because you've had such a large Kundalini attack. As the outermost layer of Kundalini energy is cleared, the smarter snakes, and most of these aren't very smart, may try and go deeper, go to a deep layer, but most of them will be erased. So as this clears, you may feel great um, for a few days. If you're really targeted a few hours, then the next layer will come up and you will go through and clear layer after layer after layer. If you've had Kundalini possession for something insane like four years, you can't clear all of it in an afternoon. It's just, it's not going to happen. If you've had it for four years, it will take you usually four months for each year, just consider a month to get through the, the worst of it, to get through most of your symptoms. And then probably another eight months to get rid of all of the symptoms. So if you've had it for 20 years, it will take you 20 months. It's uh, a process you, you can't just undo and this goes for most things if you had my position for 10 years it cannot simply be i'm done just like that it will take a fair amount of time for you to get through all the layers that have gradually been built up i'll just check if there's any questions is sweating even in winter during uh the waterfall technique practice about that no um your body your physical body is not used to your energy moving around in your energy body and you're sweating because your frequency is raising and you're essentially producing heat my first year of training i would get very hot and i take off most of my clothes um while doing it so no that's a completely normal sign No, Kundalini is not the original creation force. That That is another lie. That is incorrect. It is an artificial um, energy grid here. But they would like you to believe that rather than connecting to your own soul energy you are, or creator energy, you are connecting to Kundalini energy. Uh, so no, that's a lie. Um Overall, while you're gradually getting rid of Kundalini, some days it will be easier. Some days, is it really that dark? It looks dark on YouTube. It's pitch, it's dark. I'm going to turn a light on. Now things are probably yellow. I just moved house, so I don't have any good lamps or um, lighting set up. Auto white balance. There we are, close enough. Good. Now, now I'm a bit yellow. That's fine. <laughs> it was sunny. Oh well. Now I'm there. There we go. So, as you're clearing through various layers of Kundalini energy, um, I'm wearing suit pants, by the way. Yeah, whatever you saw, those were suit pants. Um, as you're clearing through Kundalini energy, it's important to just remain calm. Know that yes, some days it will be worse, and some days it will be better. Um, Especially whatever's going on overall planetary-wise will make your Kundalini symptoms worse just because your energetic resistance is being lowered by that. And some days when the planet's great, your energetic resistance will be higher, um, which will lead to having a much better day. But it is just a matter of gradually clearing through Kundalini energy, being calm, being patient. Know that you will eventually get through and clear all of it so long as you remain patient. Um if you, in the unlikely 
circumstances that you die while covered in Kundalini. Make sure your soul area and soul energy are clear of Kundalini. Try and make sure your energy body is clear. But if your physical body is riddled with it, you won't take that with you. So you'll be okay there. Um, next, I'll talk about some personal stories I have with Kundalini. So a few years ago, I had a friend online called Starfire because he was a big fan of Teen Titans. And through Starfire, um, there was the first, he was the first story that I heard about Kundalini. He had no idea what Kundalini was, but he wanted to energetically evolve. He wanted to energetically improve himself and become able to see things and do things. So he started doing Kundalini yoga. He was reading Kundalini books online, watching Kundalini videos, and he did um, Kundalini exercises. And through doing that, he did start to develop abilities. And then one day he was out, I believe with his family at a restaurant, and his third eye wow, completely blew open. And he was seeing demons everywhere. The when he was at was quite bad. He looked down, his, his right hand's a snake, it's slithering around and hissing. He's feeling a lot of pain physically. Um, he goes to looks up and he, he says, oh, this, this is forever, this is permanent. And then must have been four years later when I was talking to him about uh, you know what he'd experienced. Now, well, when he said this to me, I thought, oh, well, you're just halfway through, right? So you're probably in like, the middle point and if you just keep going just power through and get to the end you'll you'll be just fine and you'll have it all under control and the answer is no if he kept going he would have ended up as a kundalini possessed person so he was smart to stop where he was but he would have been a lot smarter to, to never start it um i did tell him hey you can clear kundalini energy but for him the idea that all of the suffering he'd experienced was unnecessary and that he could clear it he went no no this is forever it's permanent you you cannot clear kundalini energy because in his mind if he were to admit that the last four years he could have fought against it he could have cleared it or even now four years later he could clear it he wouldn't mentally be able to handle the strain that he'd been tricked and that there was a solution to his problem now it you know it does require a fair amount of energetic strength and clearing kundalini when you're far along is a, is a very painful process, but it, it can certainly be done. You just have to, you know, really decide to do it. Uh, what's the difference between this video and my Kundalini video from last year? Well, I don't think that video cleared Kundalini. I was just talking about Kundalini. Um, in my experience, I've never come across a positive snake or reptilian entity. Kundalini possessed people tell you, no, they're not all bad. Just had demonic worshippers will say, no, not all the demons are bad. What are you, stupid? That's racist. It's not racist. All the demons are evil, all the snakes are evil. I've never come across a positive snake or demon whatsoever. No, that's not correct. The, the Gnostic texts are wrong, Morgan. That's not accurate uh, in my experience. If you don't feel anything, it could be that you have little snow kundalini energy, or it could be that you're just having delayed energy sensitivity. Um, so, oh yeah, I'll talk about what a real kundalini awakening is now. All right, so let's say you're uh, around someone and he injects kundalini energy into you willingly, and then. Uh, a few months later, let's say two months, you start getting hissing in your ears. Uh, you start feeling energetic symptoms. Now, the tingling in your symptoms, are in, in your hands, what that is, is that's your natural energy responding to snakes. And often the hands in most people will be their most sensitive energetic area, especially when they first start. So what they're feeling is their personal energy trying to get rid of the snakes in their hands. That's the reaction there. You're feeling it strongly because it's, essentially the equivalent of white blood cells attacking things in the energetic realm. They're trying to clear your hands of the snakes. Now, the pineal gland is an implant that is artificial as well. It goes around the stomach. There is a round circular rib cage. Then it has a almost spinal cord, like large bone structure that comes up another circular rib cage around the sole area in the chest. Then a third one that comes up from the chest through the throat, third one wraps around your brain, then out of that comes what you'll see when you um, 
look up the pineal gland. It looks like a 2D image of an eye. Now, energetically, that is what the pineal gland is, and you can clear it. I had some, I'd say major problems with my pineal gland, and that was I would energy train all the time. And when I would energy train, mainly in, I'm going to say early 2020 is when this happened, I was energy training a lot, and I was just hearing shh. And at that point, I thought, why would there be a physical limitation on my energetic strength? That it, it didn't feel right to me. It didn't make sense why there'd be a physical limit um, on energy training. So I kept energy training and I figured there was just a mass of implants. I wasn't sure it was a pineal gland, but I figured there was a mass of implants that were causing this hissing noise. So I was uh, attacking, attacking, attacking um, over three days, pretty much just doing that. Um, and it, I was just getting shh. And it got so stupidly loud that after the third day, I went, okay, that's it, fine. It's not an implant. It's not, fine, I'll stop, I'll stop. And I stopped for two days. And then two days later, it went shh and decreased. I now have no hissing in my ears whatsoever, which is phenomenal. Um, but I had that enough to do No, it is an implant. And I went back and I kept attacking. And eventually I was able to fully clear that mess of implants that was covering the pineal gland. Then I believe I cleared the pineal gland then. Um, or I may have just, no, I believe I cleared the pineal gland later, But I cleared enough implants around there that the hissing and what was magnifying its strength stopped. And my energetic strength was enough to stop the pineal gland interfering with me much at that point. Um, but the pineal gland, it is a major limiter. A lot of these things, they say, this is the true goal. You need to uncalcify your pineal gland and get it activated. And while you can, it is still a limiter. It's still a rusty anchor that you're moving along with you. Um, so in my experience, that is the pineal gland. So the snakes are activating the pineal gland, but they're using it for their own nefarious purposes. They won't in my i've never seen a hybridized pineal gland they'd much rather spend that energy and build their own um spinal structure uh, as mentioned earlier then working on a pineal gland but that's what the pineal gland is it is an energetic implant the main places your energetic strength comes from and i've said this before but it is important to know it comes from your soul your stomach and your head and then you've got your meridians you've got your different energetic pathways um, your energy body, those will play a large factor in your energetic strength. Um, but the pineal gland doesn't. It is there to limit you. That's that's its goal. Um, talking about Kundalini people saying it's God, I knew in 2019, um, this one woman who at the time I thought had an energetic abilities. No, she was just very corrupted and a good example of everything not to do. But one night, uh, no, one morning I woke up, it was probably 8 a.m., and I could see at the foot of my bed this etheric, and by that I mean it was a very detailed cobra, but it was blue, and it was in a coil, and its head was there, and it hissed at me, and I went, all right, well, this is um, odd. And I think I got up and opened the curtains. They were open a bit, so there was some sunlight in, but I opened them all the way, and in the sunlight, it couldn't fully stay there. And I asked her, hey, I just saw this etheric cobra uh, at the foot of my bed. What is that? And she said, oh, yes, that's how I see God. You've just been graced with the presence of God. And I thought, all right, that's definitely incorrect. God is not a snake. <laughs> that's very wrong. Um, so that's my experience with uh, uh, what they call God. It's certainly just a negative entity that was just feeding off my energy. It was no God, that's for sure. Um, one of the most important things is, especially when you're energy training, just work with your own personal energy and nature's energy as well. Don't work with Kundalini energy. When I was um, wanting to energy train, I had no idea how. I looked up online, how do I get stronger energetically? And one of the things that came up was play Kundalini video. So I went on YouTube and I typed in Kundalini strengthening video, and on came this like hypnotic, um, like there were some odd hypnotic, hypnotic shapes, and then music, and then language in probably Indian that I could not understand. And I just had that on for about 40 minutes, and I felt a bit odd, and that was about it. And then I went to show it to a friend, um, 
and put it on. And he went, dude, what? this is hypnotic. This is clearly not a good thing. And I, I lots of people thought about it. I thought, yeah, you're right. Um, and then that was about, that was my experience with Kundalini after that. I went, he's right. Um, I don't think strengthening my energy with snakes is a good idea. That sounds like I'll just be trading one, you know, d demonic master for another. Uh, so, so I didn't do that. I'll just um, answer questions now. No, that's not correct. Pa past lives, in my experience, are quite true. There are, they will set up false overlays and false past lives, but no, we've definitely been here quite a long time. Um, it's not that they're memories of ancestors. Yes, that's correct. If you do see someone's eyes shift, they have a lot of Kundalini possession going on. Yes, if you're feeling sharp pain and numbness, that is your physical body reacting to snakes being erased. It can also be snakes attacking you while they're being erased. Um, but yes, just, you know, stay calm through it. No, I, I would not say the human body is an AI interface. I would say this matrix was inherently positive when it was created. Um, and then it was hijacked quite a long time ago. Uh, our human bodies are not an AI construct. They're, they're a physical flesh and blood construct. Um, the human bodies themselves have positive potential. There's, there's nothing inherently negative about them. Um... In general, there are different types of Kundalini snakes. One of the, the most common one is a, a green python, but there are red, red snakes, blue snakes, or all, all kinds of various snakes. They'll usually all have Kundalini energy. Uh, one to take note of is a white, almost gray snake with often purple and blue splotches around it. Uh, this snake is very common for invading into dreams. Often they'll, they'll invade in dreams just to scare you and feed off your fear energy. They'll often feed off your energy in the dream as well. Um, they're very common. Um, I think I don't use the little videos. I do use positive frequencies, but most people who make them are in a terrible energetic state. So most of them aren't very good. Good. Um, I'll talk about Kundalini Yoga now. So yoga itself, not Kundalini Yoga, just yoga, okay? Doing the yoga exercises is perfectly safe. It's perfectly reasonable. You can move your energy around while doing it, um, and you'll have no energetic problems. Kundalini Yoga is somewhat dangerous, especially if you're watching a YouTube video of someone full of Kundalini, as that energy will try and come out of the video and infect you with Kundalini energy. Um Kundalini yoga, the exercises themselves, for the most part, as someone who's not done Kundalini yoga, are fairly safe. But if you're doing Kundalini yoga and your intention is to do the energetic aspect of it, moving snakes around, <laughs> that's quite dangerous. Um, and if you're intent intending to connect to a Kundalini entity realm or connect to Kundalini entities or calling them in, if you're not energetically strong at the moment, you're just doing that, that's very dangerous. So I don't recommend Kundalini yoga, but... Just regular yoga is fine. Um, what does God look like? That's a, a complex question. Not a snake. O overall, um, I've not seen in any kind of like physical manifestation that I'd say, oh, that's God. But the, the best thing... To, to answer that would be to train your own soul energy and then you'll go inside of your soul energy. And there are so many different interpretations of what you could consider God, but as you train that and develop that, God is in the, the creator of the matrix would be a completely different answer to the kind of benevolent, all powerful, positive energy source, which, which isn't here because um, the world would be a very different state if it was. It, so it, it just, this it's very much up to interpretation, and it's not a question I could really answer without giving it a lot more thought.
That that's a good point, Hasnev. No, none of my recent videos are missing. Okay, for anyone who's sixty years or older, what YouTube just changes, and they do that all the time. It, it's 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 what they do. It's deliberately um, designed to potentially make people not want to use the platform anymore. But if you go on my YouTube channel before when you would press videos and you would see my videos, there is now a button that is live it, next to videos. If you press the live button. There will be the live streams from the past. So they're all still there. Okay. Um, good. You, you should be able to find that without much of an issue. Big thanks to Steve, by the way. I've just moved. Um, I'm in a very nice farmhouse now. But the internet here, hopefully it will get better. But my internet was terrible. And there's no way I could stream. So this is being streamed through Zoom, I'm on a Zoom call with Steve, and then from his, his Steve, uh, as in CPO, the person who I have, I have an interview up with, it's being streamed via his computer, and this is a Zoom call. <laughs> so a so big thank you to Steve. Um, feel free to ask any questions about Kundalini or energy now. I pretty much talk all I can about Kundalini without going into this dark and more, more deep you know deeper things it's you know I've, I've covered what i need to is what i say one thing you will find as you're clearing kundalini entities and this goes for negative energies in general so let's say when you start you've got like left arm possession okay you're you're watching and your your left arm is piling around and you go, oh well that's that's not good that's fine. That will gradually go away as you become more energetically clear. And then one day they let, they give up on your left arm. They go, okay, this is not working. We're still losing. And then you now have pain in your shoulder. You now have pain in your left leg. And you now have pain in your stomach. That's because they have separated. It hasn't gotten worse. You're winning and they've changed tactic. And that's why the pain has changed to different areas. It's not something to worry about, but that is um, something that does gradually happen to people. Uh one thing to note, right now with mainly needleman energy, that's that's the biggest problem at the moment. Um, the world is at about the darkest it's been for a long period of time. I'm talking a few years now. Um, it's the darkest it's been in about the last 700 years. But on the bright side, Shadow and Eminence has started airing, and it's really good. So you, you've got to celebrate the small victories because <laughs> otherwise you don't have you run out of things to you know celebrate. You're just looking at all the negative things. Yeah, Kundalini is is rather uh, painful to clear. It, it's not pleasant, but you, it's well worth it because you feel much better, um, and you'll feel significantly clearer once it's gone. Uh, do I face interference when talking about these things? No, when I'm talking off the cuff. I'm pretty energetically clear and my energy pathways are good there. But if I try to memorize things, then I can face more interference. Um, but in general, no. And my internet, my overall energy here is fairly good. It's just the internet itself is not that good. So there's no interference there. It's um, often when people have freezing or stuttering, it's on their end and their Wi-Fi router or their computer is being targeted, uh, which does tend to happen. Yeah, no, don't follow people that are doing Kundalini yoga. If, if you're following someone and they're absolutely oozing Kundalini energy, you, when you're watching them, you're feeling their energy field and their Kundalini energy will try and get on you. So it's best to try and avoid people, right? Just how if someone was, you know, actively summoning something negative, you wouldn't watch them because it could potentially affect you. Um, Jeff's asked that sometimes he sees two or three uh, green energy flowing in his waterfall. Yes, just keep doing the waterfall technique and ignore any artificial... I never had that, but ignore any artificial colors that are there. And in time, as your energy strengthens, they should decrease before disappearing. Yeah, Kundalini energy tends to affect major organs it just depends what they're targeting so it will differ for a lot of people 
Um, in general, they tend to really want to take over the spine and the hands. Um, how does this Kundalini energy affect your heart? Well, for most people, the heart's not a main thing that Kundalini does target, but if, because they want you alive, they want to take take control of you, and if they target your heart, they're not going to be able to run you with their machine for the next 20 to 30 years. So, it's less likely for them to target your heart, but if they've got a lot of energy um, in your body, like let's say you're physically working out, and doing that moves your energy around, which they hate because they want you to have as much stagnant energy as possible because it's more easy for them to hybridize you if you do that. So then they will try and constrict your heart or lungs. You just feel a constricting feeling and your cardiovascular system will be energetically harder to use. Um, just push through it and do some energy clearing while you're working out and that should help, you know, just gradually keep going through it. What's the range of the video? The, the range of the video uh, changes greatly depending on how much Kundalini energy uh, in, in your area. So use the best answer would be use your intuition with that. Um, if you need it more focused on you, you, you can ask it to do that. Um, or if you're going fairly well or you're feeling it too much, then you can ask for it to disperse. That's perfectly normal. Uh, Kundalini doesn't impact chakras or Reiki much because they're completely different things. In my experience, it just tends to... It leaves Reiki alone, uh, but it might bury it if it's trying to you know, take you over. And you're not really going to be able to use Reiki energy to clear Kundalini whatsoever. It'd be almost null and void. Um, so it wouldn't really affect them much whatsoever. They're on its, they're, you know, a, a negative thing, so we'll just ignore them for the most part. Uh, do I think more people are waking up? Well, it's, it's kind of hard not to wake up when, you know, everything's staring you in the face. It's just a matter of what they wake up into. Um, but I'd say yes. Where did my, I learn all this information by energy training and clearing all the time and by working on people for the past two years it, a lot of negativities they're not original it's all just the same stuff copy pasted over and over and over so i've worked on a lot of people that have had kundalini problems and you see the same you know problems over and over and over it's just you know repetition but yes this is all uh personal experience i'm not talking from any books or any secondhand information here Oh, that's right. I forgot. I forgot to mention. So when I say your your third eye has opened when you've had a Kundalini awakening, your third eye has not opened. What they have done, the, the third eye is just a chakra. <laughs> so no, that's probably it, it's not exactly a good term. But when I remote view, I use my two eyes, um, and I can see much better than when I was trying to use any chakras through my view or see anything. But what is happening is Kundalini energy has hybridized usually your your vision pathway, which comes from your soul. It comes up through here, up, 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 and then into your eyes. So it will hybridize there first, so you don't know what's going on, and there, 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 there. Then it'll get your eyes, and then it'll build it up, build it up, build it up, and then they'll go, okay, we got your eyes. And that's what happens when your third eye awakens from a kundalini awakening. It's and now you have snake eyes, and that's why you can't turn them off, because it, it's a major reason why you can't turn them off and why you're perceiving more. They've done this to terrify you because the more terrified you are, the worse your state is, the less likely you're going to try and stand up against them. The less likely you, you know, won't just cower and hide and, you know, make it easier for them to hijack you. If you're having, um, I think that's all the symptoms I've talked about with the Kundalini awakening. Um, who are they? The, the snakes do it. So, if you're having a spiritual awakening, which is very different to a Kundalini awakening, you will look it up and you'll go, help, I'm having pain everywhere. I'm seeing things. I'm sensing things. And my empath abilities are way too strong. I'm seeing auras everywhere. Um, 
There's a lot of various problems you can have with the spiritual awakening. That is not a Kundalini awakening. A Kundalini awakening is only if somebody else has awakened your Kundalini or you've deliberately done it. A spiritual awakening is when you're going through life and then you suddenly just feel like you're straight up dying. Um, your sense of self, things you used to do before, you, you can't really find it, any value in it. And you just have a strong feeling to figure out what's actually going on and to try and train your energy, um, ideally you know, a, a proper way. That's what happens when a spiritual awakening occurs. Uh, spiritual awakenings will often happen if you're getting just absolutely energetically targeted. And this happened to me in 2017, I'd, I'd say. I was getting absolutely just wrecked energetically. It was in a terrible emotional state. And your soul goes, all right, we need to wake him up now, or he's either going to just straight up drop dead, or he's just going to get massive possession. Um the, because you, you know it's very much heading that way so you, your soul will often do that if it thinks number one either you can handle it or number two you need to do this now or there's not going to be anything left later on that's what usually triggers a spiritual awakening it's often desperation or it's your soul sensing something that will happen really bad to you in say six months and unless you awaken that will happen that that can also cause a spiritual awakening um Spiritual awakenings can be quite painful. You can consider it the dark night of the soul that is usually present when you're having a spiritual awakening. But it's not a kundalini awakening. The people who say a spiritual awakening is, is a kundalini awakening are people who have no idea what's going on. And they experienced a spiritual awakening and then they looked up on YouTube or they spoke to someone and they went, oh, it's a kundalini awakening. Oh, it all makes sense now. And these are ascension symptoms. Um, they're people who aren't really thinking for themselves or, or thinking critically. Uh, and they're the people who will tell you that all the symptoms of a spiritual awakening are a kundalini awakening. Um, a lot of this is designed to just be as confusing as and also contradictory for people so that they can't really figure out what's actually going on. Um, I'm not going to answer questions about religious texts. Uh, spiritual awakening seems to have something. It does. It's well, it's more like it happens and it's really shit for maybe a month or two, and then you're now the new person and it's stopped. And now it's up to you to energetically train and to live your new life. Because while the 3D aspect in this matrix can be okay, you, you do need to energetically wake up, you do need to train, otherwise, you, you will be stuck here. It is important that you wake up and that you see things for what's truly going on and that you energetically stand up for yourself and, you know, stand up for what you need to stand up for. Um, if anyone has any questions about spiritual awakenings, let me know. Yes, that's correct. The serpents are manipulators, just like demons are. They're very similar. Yeah, if you can feel that, like, oftentimes, um, it, it, when I'm energy clearing, I don't allow things to get away because they'll go away and they'll try and bring back reinforcements. So if you're feeling, like, essentially a snake or a worm trying to come out of your arm, it, it's not going to get out, okay? It's going to come out and it's going to... He, if he gets out, that's great. But then the energy that's around your arm will grab him and erase him. So you won't need to worry about reinforcements coming from outside unless you're somewhere that's absolutely riddled with Kundalini energy, um, which case this video will help clear that from your surroundings as well. Uh, I'm not going to answer questions about celebrities because I uh, really don't care about them. Can Alzheimer's be removed with their energy? Uh, can it be removed? It depends on the energetic cause. If the cause is you hit your head badly and that developed Alzheimer's, that would actually be easier to energetically restore than if their Alzheimer's is from, say, Kundalini or demonic energy. Um, a better way to phrase it would be, can Alzheimer's be improved upon and potentially fully healed with energy? And the answer would be yes. Can it be removed? No, that wouldn't be the correct phrasing. Yes, you, you can remove black magic and sorcery with your own energy. It's, again, just a question of energetic strength. Can you have multiple spiritual awakenings within a few years? Um, not that I know of. I had one, and one was enough. I mean, I'm pretty spiritual now. I don't think I can get more spiritual. If I have another spiritual awakening, I'm not, I'm not my body anymore. Um, so, no, you should probably just be having one. The only way you can have more than one is if you have it, and you just 
fight against it as much as possible and try and retain smoking and drinking and everything else. If you do that, then it could potentially not work and then you'd feel miserable and then your soul three months later would go, all right, let's do it again properly this time. Come on. That would be really the only way that I can think of that you'd have more than one spiritual awakening. What do I think about ancestors feeling that's too big a, a topic and varies from, from person to person, so it's not something I can talk about overall. Um, well, heartbreak usually creates... A, um, I'm going to talk about energetic traumas at a later time, but it usually creates an energetic trauma um, that you then ha have to work on you, called a trauma wound. But yeah, they're they're a very common thing people need to clear. Um, I don't know anything about Nagas. I'm not a part of any New Age circles, but Nagas, it's just another term for serpents and humanoid serpents. Um, they're quite negative. I've erased a lot of them. So <laughs> there's not much to really say there. Yeah, there's not that much point to ancestors. There's, there's a big point for ancestors in animals because they will have ancestral memory and they'll know to fly south for the winter. Um, but as, as humans, no, we don't really need to fly south for the winter. A lot of our ancestral memory, it's not really that useful, particularly with how rapidly technology, and it's, it's designed to do this, uh, it's rapidly advancing intentionally. Um, so most of our ancestral memory, it's not really worthwhile or useful. Yeah, if you're <laughs> CK says he can't feel, he can't move his right arm, that is normal. Um, in the past, when I've done a lot of energy clearing, your energy body will essentially say, "Okay, you're no longer." And the thing is, if you really have to move it, you can uh, and you can move your left arm. But if your arm goes numb and just feels heavy and you just it's down, that's fine. Just let it down. It's energetically processing and clearing a lot. That's nothing to worry about, and you will get your arm back. Once the process is clear, it can take 20 minutes or it can take three hours, but you will get your arm back. Yes, cooking when you have both arms like down like that is really annoying. But um, it's, you know, not, it's not something to worry about. And it is just a positive part of the process. Yeah, try not to do yoga in places where they're doing kundalini yoga because, yes, you're doing yoga in an area full of kundalini energy. Try and do it somewhere else. Uh, talking about dream state is a rather complex question, so I'll talk about that another time. Kundalini, I mean, it's such a major problem. Like, as I'm clearing this, I'm not feeling that much because I stay away from Kundalini energy. And I've cleared the vast majority, if not all of my Kundalini energy or Kundalini energy that's been thrown into me. Um, but I did feel this one was very important because it is uh, quite a constant on clients I work with. It's, it's very frequent that people have major Kundalini problems. Um, and they're, you know, needing help to clear them. And it's not very important that this information is out there because <laughs> this will help prevent, you know, someone who's 14 and wants to, or even like 35, who goes, all right, I, I want to energetically train, I want to get strong. This will be helpful information for them so they don't go and become a serpent and instead they become a force for good. I've already talked about distinguishing between a negative and positive energy in the past, like three times. No, I, I don't think people wearing white clothes and headdresses is a Kundalini ritual. That doesn't sound correct. Yeah, often negative entities when you're 
clearly. They, I mean, you may just get a snake riding you, but they often manifest themselves into hands and grab you or dig the nails into you. That's a regular thing to feel when you're clearing something that really doesn't want to be cleared or when something's attacking you. Oh, one thing I'll mention. Um, so with my clearing videos, if you listen to, say, like uh, a white language video by someone who's really covered in or you have like a new age clearing done, oftentimes you will feel like, I didn't have this have this done, but from what I've seen on others, they'll feel really high and they'll, you know, then crave that high. They may feel high for like three days, but then it will wear off and there'll usually be a crash. With my energy clearing videos, you don't normally feel, at least I, I'm used to my energy, so I may be a bit biased here, but you don't feel really, really high and then crash. You just feel a sense of calm and a sense of like absence of negative things gone. Um, I'll show you this. When I was in Sardinia, the, the energy there, there's a, and I'll talk about this much more detail in a later video. I'm just thinking if I should do this now. Yeah, I, I think I will. So when I was there and I was in a positive energy vortex, I was high. And that's being high all the time. It, it, number one, it's, it's terrible. It's not enjoyable whatsoever. Um, I'll make it that this auto opts you out if you're playing this again. But if you want to opt in, this, I, like, you can use your energy, if, like, if your end goal is to just be, like, list out of your mind and, like not able to count to 10 and high, um, just, you know, make the decision how to opt in. This is what I felt like in Sardinia. I'll make it for uh, two minutes, all right? We'll go for two minutes. If you want to feel really high, and you can do this with your own energy, all right? I'll do it now. So opt in or opt out. Um, someone's at the door. Great, great timing. Anyway, so I uh, opt in. This is what it feels like when you're just, you know, doped out of your mind. I'll just keep my fingers off. Why not? Uh, it's presentation. Um... You know, if your end goal is to just be high all the time, that's it's not a good goal. But hey, if that's if that'll get you energy training, then you can go ahead and do that. Is it possible to transform evil energy into good energy? No, evil and good energy are polar opposites. There's no polarity there. Um, you can't mix the two together. Yeah, if that's a good point. If you have seen a video of someone um, activating Kundalini in someone else, if they're shaking around, that's basically snake entities and Kundalini energy possessing their nervous system and causing that kind of shake and problem. And you know, if all that you you know, if you know nothing about energy, you think, oh, that looks interesting. No, that's terrible. That's what's going on. It's just possession. It's quite bad. Anyway, I'll turn. I'll stop that now. So, you know, you can feel high if you want, but in general, you know, your your goal should really be to just be calm, be peaceful, and just you know have a good quality of life and be able to energetically strengthen yourselves. Are you able to heal your own injuries? Well, I'm able to heal my own injuries. Yes, um, as you build up your own energetic strength, you will be able to heal injuries. Um, there's no reason you wouldn't be able to do that. Good, we're almost set now. We'll go to an hour. Um, anyone have any other questions regarding Kundalini spiritual awakenings um, or Kundalini awakenings? If you ask a question, I didn't say it by the way. Feel free to uh, copy and paste it. How can you tell if where you live is a positive vortex or not? Well, it's a good question. Do, do you live in Sardinia? If the answer is no, then it's probably not positive. Um, it, it depends. There's very few positive vortexes on Earth. So, but most likely you're not living in a negative vortex either. You're just living in a standard area. Um, but... The energy of where you are, you know, do, does very significantly. I'd say, you know, feel into that yourself and, you know, try and come up with your own answer there because it's rather apparent if you feel it, you know, into the sky, whether you're feeling positive or negative. Is there a natural slash legit spinal energy? Yes, your own personal energy, uh, your, your own soul energy. That's natural. Um, 
and perfectly fine to move up and down your spine as much as you want. Can you become corrupted by a spiritual awakening? If you're stupid and go and work with corrupted people, uh, then yes. Otherwise, no, it's not going to happen. Or, or unless you're around some very corrupt people, which is very unlikely. I didn't function in Sardinia. <laughs> I, I just energy drained. I couldn't get out to 10. It's, it was really, I'm, I'll talk about this uh, in, a, in a later video. It, I mean, it was great. I, I got a lot of energy training done. I, I got quite a lot stronger, but being high, high shit all the time, you can't function. It's not enjoyable, right? You, you want to have a good, peaceful quality of life and be able to think clearly. You know, that's what your goal should be. For sure, I'll, I'll talk about that um, in, in another video, Lisa. Um, what you may find, so if you've had a lot of Kundalini energy, is particularly in your muscular system, as that clears, you may feel fatigue and like, essentially this Kundalini energy has been straining your muscle system, it's been straining your nervous system, and now that it's cleared, the inflammation in your body goes, ah, oh, oh, I can finally breathe, and now you're feeling that your body is inflamed. It was in a, a very overly fatigued state for potentially years, and now you may feel sore and tender for a few weeks. That's perfectly normal as your body can now finally relax. Now it's not being strangled by Kundalini energy, which was it thus in turning, uh, it thus in turn causing inflammation everywhere. Can you change appearances with your own energy? Yes. Um, I believe so. It, it's more so as you heal, your facial structure and body will re you can work on realigning it. Um, but yes, you should be able to. I don't know if we have 114 chakras. I've erased 14, 15, at least of mine. Um, but really, you just need to do the, and I think I talked about this in the last video, maybe long before. Um, uh, the major nine chakras to start with that they're pretty easy um i don't know i don't think we have 140 chakras maybe but there's a lot of dimensions there's a lot of aspects of cell they've made this very annoying to clear but um yeah i, I simply don't know the answer that one at this moment now i've got my own place by the way hopefully my internet can get better and i won't be zoom calling steve to get a live stream up um but yeah, now I've got my place, especially in December, I'm going to, to try and make uh, live streams more frequent because um, there's a lot of different things that need to be cleared. Uh, so, you know, I do, this should be more frequent. 